Hey, Slay Nation. We're back with another episode of the So She Slays podcast. Chauncey and I are super excited that we're bringing more of this type of content to you as far as like her and I just like talking about things because um, I don't think it really dawned on us that people <laughs> care about what we think. <laughs> Well, people do care. I don't know why they care, but people do care. And uh, we are here to talk about some real life stuff because we are your older best friends, your older sisters. And mm -hmm. we might have some good life advice for you and some terrible life advice for you, but we have advice. I mean, at the, at the very least, you can uh, um, relate or at least get a good laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Just laugh. It's okay. We are not in it whatsoever. Um, okay, so we started talking to some of the wonderful people that work <laughs> at So She Slays and Slay AF with us, and um, they wanted us to talk about like post grad and oh how gosh. ridiculous it it is for them. Like our wonderful yeah. Gen Zs are are you know people that are graduating college right now, and I just want to take like a trip down memory lane for a second oh, and no. be like, you oh. know. It's been a minute since Chauncey and I have graduated, you know, grad school, um, which is where Chauncey and I met. But I mean, it was hectic. Like I like oh take a take a second. Those of us who have graduated, whether it's undergrad or graduate or even like high school, because we all know that college isn't for everybody. Um, and just kind of remember what your train of thought was back then. Oh um, gosh, no. So <laughs> no, okay. I mean, okay, so, no. Like, I understand we have to talk about this because we were all mini adults at one point in time. And I still don't think I'm a real adult yet, but I know I am. I don't. But like, you know yeah. I do that all the time. I'm just like, I'm in my 30s. How am I an adult? I oh, really when the bills, like one. when the bills have to come to get paid, when I have to pay my bills, that's when I know I'm a real adult, like a real adult. So yeah, like we have some yeah, good times Yeah, like I think it's taxes for me. Um <gasps> I feel like Don't taxes is, is like a thing. I mean, <laughs> anyways, anyway, so our post-grad crisis is pretty much what our lovely Gen Zers in our uh, So She Slays uh, community asked us to talk about was like our post-grad crisis. Now, Chauncey, do you remember your post-grad crisis? Oh, gosh. So before I went to grad school, I took six months off to work at this job I was working at before I graduated from undergrad. So I was working at a call center the last semester of undergrad, my senior year. Oh, that's yes. Right. Yes. I yes, totally yes. forgot that. Because it's PTSD for all of us. <laughs> so like basically I worked there for like the last semester of undergrad and I was like, okay, I'll do this full time until I forever want to go to grad school or get another job. So I was like, okay, I'll do it. So I did work at a call center for a few months after I graduated. Did you hate and, it? Oh, I hated it. It was the point if you called me on the phone, I wouldn't answer the phone because I was like, get have PTSD from work. <laughs> but I can't text. I couldn't call. I was just. You're like, I'm I done had with the, people. I'm done with people at a certain time. So I did that. And then I think it was like, they kept telling me like, we're going to lay you guys off. We're going to lay you guys off. I was so excited to get laid off. I was like, oh, yes, lay me off. Did not get laid off. No, this. I'm going to grad school. So, really? like, so the reason why I went to grad school was because either you had to find a new job in my house or go back to school. And so I was like, I'm not going back to work again. Like I'm going to grad school. This is, this is bullshit. <laughs> yeah. I took all the tests I needed to take the day to grad school, did all the paperwork, documentation, rushed that real quick. Went to Academy Art, um, did that for two years, two and a half years. I finished in two and a half years. Um, grad school was fun. Like I got to meet my, one of my best friends, Heather, obviously. My other best friends throughout the time, like my best friend, Daniel, and everyone and then I went to the gym with Heather which is a cool job That's, to have when you're in school yes yeah it's, it's a cool gym to, it's a cool job to have when you're in grad school because you're, you're working but you're not working but you like meet but you're like hanging out with, friends, out with, with your friends too. all day like we used to like I remember back in the day we'll like all work on a Friday most of us work Friday and we all will go to like a bar or a club afterwards and we all meet there like we get changed at the gym and then go out those so then you wake up the next times. morning, wake up the next morning, open the gym at five in the morning and it would be deadly to go back to like, I remember going out Friday night with all the, like everyone, the whole crew, go get a, uh, go get a burrito at El Ferrates is in San Francisco, one of the best burritos, eat half of it, go home, take a mini, mini, mini nap, you call it, take a shower Go back to work, open the gym at like five in the morning, and eat half a burrito at lunch. 
but it was fun like it was a good time to, like, <laughs> it was i could not tell this i could do that now oh my oh my god no way yeah but like going that time between like real adulthood and like post-college is like this fun time that you really not like you're an adult but you're not an adult you know what i feel like though a lot of people like do not feel that way like i don't think i felt that way i think because like especially after grad school because oh i went from like undergrad to grad school like right away i did not take a break at oh all gosh. i knew myself too well i knew if i took a break my ass would never go back um yeah. <laughs> so i was like i did not take a break at all um and then the reason why I went to grad school though was because like I went to Chico State. Shout out Chico State. I loved it. Um, it's everything you think it is and more. It's pretty <laughs> much like Vegas for college kids. Uh, man, minus the gambling. Um, I loved it. I had so much fun. Um, but I also knew that like in media and entertainment and all that kind of stuff, like it was a small town. It was a country in like there wasn't a whole lot of opportunity and so I knew I needed to get like bigger network connections um in bigger cities where there's more opportunity and there's like a lot more media entertainment blah 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 right yeah. so I went to the Academy of Art which is where Chauncey and I met in San Francisco and I took their uh media multimedia communications program and just like I thrived there as well. I was like super, super happy I made that decision. I met a lot of different people and like my network definitely grew. It was by far like probably one of the smartest choices that I've done. Now I will always preface this, like do not go to like school or program or whatever if you're just like, if you don't have a reason, you know what I mean? Like make sure you have a reason. And if, and if you pull a Chauncey, uh, at least go for something that you probably think you could use. <laughs> yes, like I, when I first started Academy Art, I was advertising because I got my undergrad in advertising and business. And then I was like, oh, I'll just do it for my grad school. Like, why not? That'll be cool. End up hating it. Like first semester, I hated it. Oh, I hated it. You could like, I was always nervous, like disgustingly nervous. And then I was like telling my parents, I was like, mom and dad, like what I'm going to do. Like, I don't like it, but I loved it in undergrad. But I remember... I remember in undergrad, I don't, this is, I want to age myself right now. And I know it's bad to age myself, but it's all right. I was obsessed with the heels. Okay. Lauren Conrad going to fit them. Laguna Beach. Stuff, right? Yes. All that great stuff. That was when I was in high school. So I remember college I was like, mom, I want to go to fit them and do fashion. Cause that was a big thing. My mom, my dad said, no, you're going to go to college. Okay. I go always to went to fit them too. Yes. But I was like, no, <laughs> no, my mom was like, you're going to go to college, get a degree that's transferable. And if you for some reason still want to do this then we'll talk about after after college after undergrad realized i love advertising psychology was great did undergrad there went to grad school did not like advertising in that sector and i was talking to my one of my friends from high school and he was just like you should really <laughs> don't give that face heather uh you should really do <laughs> and the reason what i face? that face that face like oh who is she talking about yes this person i went to high school with he was in fashion he's like oh you should really do like you know something in fashion like you you love it and i was like i like fashion and i like journalism so i decided to do it i loved teen vogue at the time and i went to fashion journalism and i loved it but yeah like you have to i feel like your undergrad you do something that's really really safe like super safe mm -hmm. and then your grad school you do something really fun or you do the opposite like i have friends who do something really fun in undergrad and then went to get their MBA for their like masters, you know? So like, That's it depends. so interesting. But I did something really stable undergrad and fashion journalism, which I think is stable, but we're in the decade now that like, no one really looks at magazines like they should. Yeah, but I mean, I fun. love a good magazine, oh, but I like, I magazine. totally understand. It's so interesting how you and I have such different like backgrounds in that because, so like I, and this is rare. I, I'm finding that this is rare. I like knew what I wanted to do my whole life. Like I, <laughs> that is good. so rare. So don't don't put that on you people listening. Like that no, is don't. not. That That's is really very cool, very freaking rare. Um, I knew what I wanted from like day one. So, <laughs> but I also had life though. Like you know, um, 
whether it's like life circumstances or what I think I should do kind of get in my way. So it took me off the path here and there, but like no matter what, God, universe, whatever, always threw something back in my way to like bumper car me back into the path I was supposed to be on. So, I mean, I always knew it was gonna be media and entertainment. Like I loved being in front of the camera. I love being behind the camera. I love acting, like all of that stuff. I was like, this is my jam. This is my world. This is what I wanna live in. Um, so anything, I didn't even like, I never took my SATs ever. <laughs> Um, I never, like, I went to a JC right out of yeah. high school because I was like, this is dumb. Why am I going to pay, like, um, ridiculous prices for the same freaking curriculum? Like, everybody has to take I went to JC first, too. I went to JC for two years. I transferred to San Jose State. Shout out to the Spartans. And, like, right? yeah, like, I knew that I wanted to go to college. I just didn't know what, I was thought it would either be, like, psychology. I'm a big psych person obviously um and i love like psychology or i was gonna be like advertising or architecture or something but it wasn't gonna be like it wasn't gonna be something like a doctor because like i'm not good at math or science Ooh, like that's not my girl, specialty okay i found that out like way long ago all right oh, my no, math teachers school. and i became best friends because math and heather does not work okay Tutoring. like algebra geometry all that no mm -mm. yeah no. but i feel like when you're that age you're allowed to like try different things and i feel like a lot of people put pressure on themselves after college or high school or grad school be like i have to have this career i have to have this type of family i need to have this type of situation by the age i'm 25 or 30 and trust me heather and i felt that pressure like at 25 yeah, this, i gotta finish grad school what am i, I have doing to do this. i have to do this or i need to have, like when i turned 27 i was like i need to have a family by 30. i need to have this like all my friends are having kids all my friends are doing this or like my friend has this career she's a manager she's a director that's not your story just because your friends yeah. are doing it doesn't mean you have to do it and i think it comes better with age like heather and i like we realize like your path is not going the same path as your friends and that's mm. okay like Absolutely. if you're the career furniture group or the mom friend or like the senior citizen furniture group be that friend because it's fun to be that friend. Like, Girl, you said senior citizen. <laughs> but the way I feel, sometimes I am a senior citizen. But no, like, Heather, like, you had a different path. <laughs> I had a different path. Like, but it just makes you, a, it makes your circle of friends, like, diversify. And I don't think you should put pressure about, like, if you're working at, like, Heather and I are working at a gym in our, like, our mid-20s. Like, we're Ooh, And honestly, if I'm going to recommend a like post-grad job to anybody just to like because I'm always one to be like after graduation should be the time where you try a whole bunch of stuff like and I understand that like a lot of people feel lost afterwards yes. or like I don't know what to do like all of that kind of stuff like remember that you've literally spent your entire life being told what to do and when to do it and now is the first time that you're getting the chance to do what it is that you want to do in a sense yeah. or make your own schedule or whatever. So I always say like, you know what? I mean, you can hop into a career if that's what makes you feel better. But one, don't expect that career or that job to define you or be your yeah. dream job at first. Like, I don't think that that happens for a lot of people. And I think Chance, maybe you can speak to that more I than was I working, can. I was working at a call center after undergrad, okay? I was dealing with people at six in the morning cussing me out every morning about the status of their cards, okay? And it was fun. Like, don't remember, I have some great stories and great laughs. I met some amazing people who were like just great people to have as like your coworkers. Like my one of my dearest friends at the call center was like in her forties, and I was like twenty two. I was barely a child. Like, and I was like taking up. I was like, where is Catherine at today? Catherine's not here. Where's my old girl at? I was like my bestie. She's like forty five. But, like, I feel like you just have to, like, have time to really figure out what you want to do because life does move really, really fast. And you have to figure out, like, you've got to be happy within yourself. And, mm -hmm. like, don't get me wrong. Like, I still think, like, if I would have done this career or done this differently, my life would have been differently. But you have to remember, everything happens for a reason. I'm, like, oh, my, like, my parents' high horse right now. Like, everything happens for a reason. You have to Patricia be Patricia and Howard, you know, you know yes. these voices are popping yes. in your head. <laughs> the voices of my wonderful parents. Like, shout out to them. But, like, I think, like you said, you just have to try everything. And you can't compare yourself. And I feel like we as people compare ourselves so much. And I feel like, gen, like, millennials, like, we all had, like, we were 
the kids who went through like a recession period. So like when we went, when we graduated a from high school. A recession, like, I mean, freaking we've been we've through like, two, like or three, two or three right now. At this point, I was mean, PTSD is my entire yeah. life. <laughs> but yeah, like when we graduated, like from like college and like middle school, like high school and stuff like that, it was like, oh, recession hit. Everything like, you know, there's no jobs in the market or whatever. So like we were already used to like trying to overcome like statistics. Adversity, us. yeah. Yeah, so I feel like even if you're like folding underwear at a, at a like at, a, at the mall at a department store a store you got a job okay you're doing something just because you don't know what it is right now you're doing something That's all i matters. always say too i'm like you know what your thing after like you got to decide what you're comfortable with now some people like to go you know grab a job or a career right out of school because that makes them feel okay because that gives them structure and that makes them feel you know, secure, which is like, if that works for you and that's what you want, like do what you, what it is you want to do. Your first job is probably not going to be the job you're going to stay at forever. Like, let's be honest. The average person stays at one job, like two years max. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of people hop around and that's so normal. If that is not your choice to go get a job right out of like a career, right out of grad school or, or, or graduation or anything like that, that's fine too. I mean, I think you need to take that time right out of school to be able to literally try everything that like sparks your curiosity. I think that's going to be the way to finding a career and a job or, you know, maybe even creating your own business that's going to make you happy. Because if you're genuinely curious and you're genuinely like, oh, I wonder if or I wonder what that would be like, you're more apt to like want to put in work and want to put in time, yes. effort and energy. And, you know, you shouldn't have to feel like you're getting stuck or locked into anything like that like Chauncey knows being quote-unquote stuck is probably like one of my like biggest fears being I, stuck in anything like I cannot yeah. I cannot I you know, girl you back me into a corner I will lose my shit yeah she's uh. like, like I like she like Heather I give her credit because like she is not like to be stuck like she's like to keep the ball moving and everything I'm a kind of person I like you know like I'm organized chaos I like organized chaos like I like to do x y and z I have a schedule I'm a routine person but I know that I am very happy the way things have happened in my life. Like, yeah, there's things I wish I could have changed, but like, we're all gonna be like, oh, I wish I should have, could have done that. But like, if you're gonna get laid off from jobs, you're gonna get fired from jobs, you're gonna be like going from job to job. As long as you're just doing what you wanna do, that's all that matters. Like, don't feel pressure to be anyone else than yourself because who, the only person gonna make you happy is you. No one else is. Like, don't compare yourself to everyone else around you. Well, and here's the thing is like a lot of people don't realize. Okay, so like Chauncey and I have been out of school for a hot second. And Thank you for saying a hot every, second. I appreciate that. A hot that. second. A hot <laughs> second. Um, I'm not going to put no, I refuse not. to put years on this. No, no. Um, anyways, but like we've been out of school for a little while. And a lot of our friends, um, you know, who either graduated before us or after us, same time of us, you know, you're going to change your career within five or 10 years. Anyways, you're going to figure out what works for you. You yourself are going to change. So it's like, do not think that you are of like your parents generation where they're going to stick at one place for 30 something years. No. Like, no, that's, that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Um, but also too, I mean, I feel like the biggest thing that people forget is that like your 20s are meant for you to go and try a whole bunch of different things. And and like Chauncey and I said, like, okay, getting, a, getting hired at the gym when I went to grad school, like, I mean, I was there part time, but even after I graduated, I was still there part time and I still worked and I was still trying to build my freelancing career, um, working in production and video production and, and all that kind of stuff. And I had no clue, but I will say that I legit went through a little bit of a depression right after oh, graduation because I was like, what the fuck do I do? Like, no. what, do I, what do I do? And I was like, oh my God, I have to find a job. I have to find money. And like, I have to, um, you know, apply to all of these different things and places and, and, and things. And, you know, I spent like a week straight just like applying for jobs I was, I'm a bit of an intense person, so it was a little much, just a little, um, <laughs> just a little bit, but I think what ended up happening is like, I ended up, you know, getting the gym, like 
promoted me to like multimedia specialist or whatever. I basically just did their social media. Yes. Um, so I started doing that and then I started like just saying yes to different freelance opportunities as like a PA or whatever, production assistant and just would help out and then like got more jobs. I was able to build like a word of mouth type of um, referral for my freelancing, but I was also able to keep like the part-time um, job and do social media too. But at the same time too, this is like, I, I kind of, this is why I always say like you have to listen to your gut because I um and Chauncey remembers this like I was working really hard but I wasn't making a lot of money because like I was only working part-time I was living in San Francisco like super expensive I had no money like there'd be times where I would go to the grocery store and I'm like can I afford you know this yeah. chicken that's six dollars or do Sounds I have to up. like eat a can of beans which is like two dollars so it's like i was yes. not i did not have money um and my only concern was like i need enough money to keep a roof over my head and food mm -hmm. in my stomach those are yeah. my two qualifications that i need and so i started doing that i started doing like just the part-time and then the freelancing gigs and all that kind of stuff and then the, the part-time job actually offered me the job full-time. Like I would get yes. benefits and pension and all that kind of stuff. And literally like, I know my dad probably would have been like, oh my God, yes, you freaking take that. Like take it, hello. And yes. I think a lot of people would say the same thing, right? You know, but honestly I got offered that and every single bone in my body was like, no like <laughs> literally I have never had such an illegitimate gut reaction See? to something in my life and I was like okay and I think they were like the people that are offering it to me were like really expecting me to be happy and I think I totally did not meet their expectations because I was like oh fuck <laughs> um and I remember I was I went outside and I was talking to um a dude that I was seeing at the time and I was just like I don't think I can do this like this is not what I want for myself like I don't want to come to the office five days a week you know nine to five every like that's I don't want that like that's if I life. take exactly it's like if I take this job even though it would solve all of my money problems right now mm -hmm. and it would you know give me benefits and pension and all this kind of stuff like I would not be happy if I took this job and it's not because they're horrible. It's like, that's just not what I want. It's not who you wanted to be at the time. Exactly. And who you are as a person. Like, and who decor. I am as a person. And I was like, I, if I took this job and it became full time, I wouldn't be able to go build my freelancing career. I wouldn't no. be able to go and work in productions and, you know, get the experience that I needed in order to like work my way up in production and, and doing videos and being on camera and like all that kind of stuff. I wouldn't be able to do that. Um, so I was like, I really had to make a decision right then and there, but I think my body already knew like what don't I needed it. to do and exactly don't do it and it was probably like that was such a pivotal moment for me um that I remember to this day and I remember how that feels and I like I had I haven't regretted it at all no you shouldn't regret it. everything you do is for a reason and I feel like you have to just trust your gut and like if you know you know and of course like you of course ask people in your trusted circle like your trusted circle like people who like want the best for you but like your mm -hmm. gut always tells you what you should or shouldn't do so yeah i you have to know yourself before you do anything else that's all i tell people so don't feel like you're stuck in anything like whatever you're doing right now is for a reason so you know it, just because you work at this place that you know that's not you're gonna be your career per se it might end up being your career in a different way you just don't know what it is yet so yeah, yeah. i think the best thing that you can do post grad is just be curious and not <clears throat> let the comparison bug kind of get to you. I like, I, I mean, I don't have any regrets post-grad whatsoever. I've always just done what I thought was best for me. And like, like we were, like we say all the time too, it's like, just because 
you know, you make a quote unquote mistake, it's not really a mistake. It's just like, those are your bumpers leading you back to the track, you know? Yeah. And I think with social media, like when we were in grad school, social media, like we have like this Instagram wasn't like as huge as it, as it is now, or like TikTok or all these amazing apps. Like, oh, I can compare myself to like, oh, this person's trapped. This person has this, this person has that. Like we tell everyone, social media is a facade. Like you take a thousand pictures just to post one Highlights, selfie. girl. Yeah. Like, it's just highlights, highlights of your life. Like, I never, I will take the same selfie 20, 30 times and post the one that I think is best. Knowing darn well there's someone's, I look crooked in, my, my, my smile looks crazy, my eye looks like blinky, like, uh. but I mean, there's like, a reason why there's like 5 million filters, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So like, just because you see like your former classmates or your friends of friends or your best friends on social media showing all their like their like their life per se it's just the highlights are happening you know and it's okay yeah, it's like, just cheer the them highlights. on it's just cheer them on because you put highlights of yourself on there and that's fine like just don't compare yourself because what you see on social media because at the end of the day it's just a facade facade it's not really real like and if it is real congratulations for that person but don't be a bitter bitch behind the screen like oh like that bitch just got married that bitch got a new job how did they get there you don't know the story because they don't know your story and if they do know their story applaud them for overcoming whatever they went through but at the end of the day do not compare yourself it's not worth it because at the end of the day no one cares no one cares except you well here's if they do care thing. about yeah. you they're just being some evil little twats okay no one cares <laughs> like no one cares. evil little twats yeah like if you're comparing me like oh well you know chauncey didn't do this, but Heather did this, and vice versa. Okay, move on. Good, good for you for but for being a fan. I appreciate <laughs> you stalking my social media. Be a fan. <laughs> Thank you for being an effing fan. But then the day, just be at peace of what you do. If you feel like you're doing the best you can at the time, that's all that matters. Because in the day, I can't judge you. I don't pay your bills. Mm. You don't. Mm. I don't pay your bills. You don't pay my bills. So one person can judge me is me. I would say, if there was any goal that I would have post-grad and in your 20s, I would say the, I would say there's like three things that stick out for me. Ooh, tell me. Three things that stick out. One, genuinely follow your curiosity. That's always going to lead you down um, a path that you're actually interested in, right? Instead like of like that. what you're supposed to do. Um, I would definitely say use this time to really get to know yourself, like yeah. really ask yourself, like take that reflection time and just be like, do I like this? Am I happy? I'm happy when I do X, Y, and Z. I'm not happy when I do A, B, and C. Like figure, figure that out, whether that's journaling or just reflection time or whatever, or you're talking to friends, right? You know, take that time to reflect and, and get to know yourself. And also know that like, you know, you're instilling, instilling like practices that you're then going to use forever and always in your life because if you start doing that early you're going to you're going to continue to do it because then you're going to get to know yourself and you're going to start basing your decisions off of what makes you happy and in, in who you are as a person um and then i would say the third one would be to take the pressure off yeah i had and and i still do this this is still a thing for me I put so much dang pressure on myself I um, and I stressed myself out for no stinking reason. Same. And it's still something that I'm working on. Like we're all a work in progress, but take the pressure off. And I know there's going to be times where you're just like, oh my gosh, you know, I really feel it or all this anxiety builds up. Um, I think just remember that you're also living a lot longer. People are living a lot longer these days. So there's a lot more time to just go do things um and, and figure things out like just yeah relax okay <laughs> oh God. you like made me think of my three okay i have three they're all quotes though like they're two from like movies okay. um first movie is from a bronx tale where robert de niro it's in my thesis for grad school too i put the saddest thing in life is wasted talent mm, facts yeah and then the second quote is from ferris bueller's day off life moves pretty fast if you don't stop and look around once in a while you can miss it so like mm -hmm. take your time to go through life um third is don't forget your inner child like the worst part about growing up is that you you start to lose things that you wish you wish you were when you're a kid and if i had like a really good family friend who's like a, a to me calandra she's like 
don't lose your inner child. Like, you're not that funny. Like, she's like, I remember you had all these ideas as a kid and you're so outgoing and now you're so like quiet now. She's like, don't lose your inner child. And I was like, mm. that's true. Cause you get older and you forget that you at one time was a child and you had all these thoughts and these dreams. Like it's of course be mature and like, you know, get your, like pay your bills and shit. But like, be responsible. Don't, don't, like, don't forget. Like you had dreams at one point in time that you wished that you could do when you got older. So just do it. All right. Slay nation. Hopefully that helps. And until next time, we'll catch you later.